thing, but she was a single mom on the trek and she persevered. One of my ancestors, Maria Call, um, was only 15 and she had to go across, I think, the Mississippi River. I'm really going to see how difficult that might have been for her been for her at only 15. The whole story of how they how they were able to relocate and change their entire life uh, for the sake of the gospel. Getting a better understanding of what my pioneer ancestors had to go through, I guess, and gaining a better testimony along the way. Just thinking about what they went through and how hard it was for them and realizing that they sacrificed so much. I love pioneers. I just like like how they came here and they just did all this and I know that they did it for like a long time, only doing it for like three days. Last time we read more of the pioneer stories, um, just hearing that more, reading that more helped me a lot to get them spiritually in mind what they were doing, what they dealt with. Remembering what the pioneers went through and how they relied on Heavenly Father and try to keep that in my mind. As I go through just two days when they go through like months of this. And hopefully, you know, stronger understanding of what they went through and uh, just help myself be more grateful for the things I have. I'm hoping to like see how difficult it really was for them and to see what kind of trials they might have gone through and trying to apply that to my life. Hoping to get out of it to where I'm able to endure. Heavenly Father's always there to help me so if I need it and I'm always there willing to have this help. So. As you begin your, your um, trek experience today, I encourage you to all, before you start walking, take the opportunity to pray and ask to receive the Spirit. And when you receive that Spirit, feel that Spirit. And take this opportunity the next couple of days of having a spiritual journey. We want you to empower and learn things, so you're going to be doing a lot. Don't expect your mom and pa to do a whole lot. We don't want mas and pa's pulling the cart at all. And your family, you guys get to work together as a family, just like our families do at home. Work together as a family to see who's going to take part in doing different parts of the challenges. Go bring them in from the plains, go bring them in from the storm. Like a fire, the spirit's burning, bring them in and keep them warm. Go bring them in from the plains, go bring them in from the cold. Wrap your loving arms around them, bring its peace to their souls. as whispers and turns to shout so clear wake up wake up it's not a dream the valley boys are here we suffered beyond anything you can imagine and many died of exposure and starvation but did you ever hear a survivor of that company utter a word of criticism 
know. The price we paid to become acquainted with God was a privilege to pay. The speaker was Francis Webster. Remember that name. My name is Chad Webster Miller. Francis Webster was my great great grandfather's brother. I didn't know that. Yesterday was about your family dynamics. You got to know your family and kind of work together as a family. You did some challenges as a family, kind of a, a unit. Just like the church, we're organizing wards, ward families, okay? Uh, we do things as war. Well, now today, this is about the company family, kind of like our state. Therefore, if ye have desires to serve God, ye are called to the work. For behold, the field is white, already to harvest. Men of Zion, <coughs> you are hereby called to serve as a missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, effective immediately. It was getting to the point where I could barely pick up my feet because I was having to put my shoulder into it to get over all the rocks. My family said the family prayer that really helped me. There was a part of it where Olivia Cooper and I, we were both in the back of the wagon and we weren't the ones pushing. All of a sudden we started going really fast, faster than we were pushing and my sister next to me, she said, I'm not pushing, are you? I said, I'm not. I'm not pushing Olivia, she's like, I'm not either. And we were actually going faster than normal. So I definitely believe it. There's angels helping us up right there. We knew that that was like angels helping us go. It was definitely hard to see them struggle like that, but with their courage and just seeing them do that, that definitely gave me a new perspective. I could just see like where they were about to have problems and I wanted to run over and help them out and but you know we couldn't so that, that was really rough. Especially seeing those wagons that didn't have everyone on them they still had places for people to pull. There was this spot where I noticed a couple of cars had kept getting stuck. And I noticed it seemed like more than half of them stopped and they each said a prayer there and they each took off up the hill after that. And just to see that kind of faith and that kind of perseverance, it, it's really 
a great example to me also. all of the parents to write letters for their youth and um, just letters of encouragement and letters to let them know how much they're loved and how much they're missed while they're gone. I'm hoping that they will realize that they are absolutely loved by their families. When you're in a kind of a raw state, you've worked hard emotionally, you've gone through things, you've had spiritual experiences, it makes those t letters from home, I think, feel really tender. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
We had one boy on our team, or our, our family that was hurt. He was hurting, he was one of the big boys, and he felt bad that he could not do what was expected of him. And he worked through it. And at the end where they uh, had him pull one person, he wanted to be the guy to do it. It was kind of like his redemption. the Sweetwater River on November 3rd. Chunks of ice. Sorry. Chunks of ice were floating in the freezing water after all these people had been through. And in their weakened condition, that river, that river seemed, seemed impossible. impossible to cross. It looked like stepping into death itself to move into the freezing stream. Men who had once been strong sat on the frozen ground and wept. Three 18-year-old boys belonging to the relief party came to the rescue. They carried nearly every member of the ill-fated handcart company across the snowbound stream. The strain was so terrible and the exposure so great that in later years all the boys died from the effects of it. That act alone will ensure C. Allen Huntington, George W. Grant, and David P. Kimball an everlasting salvation in the celestial kingdom of God, worlds without end. through the Rocky Mountains. Uh, there was this massive boulder and there, it was just like rocks everywhere. And we just, my family just like glided on over it and I felt like there had to be something else helping us through there. When we crossed the Sweetwater, and they thought they were done, but then I told them we're not there yet, and I said let's move out, and they just picked up their carts and they moved out, and I didn't hear or really see any complaining or murmuring or anything like that. So I'm proud of them. They kept going until the very end. Be spiritually prepared to go on trek because if you're not, you're not going to get anything out of it. You're just going to have a long three days. Try it and read your scriptures on trek and pray and just really get in the tune with the spirit and yourself during on trek. Well, I think that 
you're physically stronger than you think you are. You're physically, your mind's gonna break before your body does. So keep that in mind and then listen to the spirit always and you'll be able to endure many, many challenges to try. If you lose the spirit, because you're not obedient to the principles of the gospel, you're gonna be out there on your own without the Holy Ghost to God. So stay worthy.